I love this nuclear slices button that you can add and you can get to that by going to insert buttons and then clear all slices. You also have apply all slices which is also new but um, I usually have my slices automatic so that wouldn't be for me but this is pretty great or you can even just create any of these buttons or any shape and set the action to be a clear all slices. Pretty cool. However, it still doesn't apply to drill through pages annoyingly. So I said drill through to be Cambodia and I can't clear all to get rid of that. So here, if I right click on drill through and drill from Thailand, then it will show me just for Thailand, just for Bangkok and clear all slices will not do it. I have another video where I talk about how to make a clear all slices button that would do this. Um, and it's especially prominent now with some of the new features. So there's a whole lot of new stuff going on here. For example, I've got uh, extra padding on top of this. I've got these subheaders and this divider as well. And I've also got the ability to edit things. So here, so I don't need usually to have the axes and the data labels. So you can click on there and press the delete button on your keyboard and then it will keep it sticky. So click on there. It is sometimes finicky to get there. So you do need to sort of like double click things sometimes or click them, but it, it doesn't know if you're trying to filter it or whatever like this. So do be careful about that. But some things are a lot easier, like for example, adding data labels to just one part of it. You can right click and you can add data labels or add total labels and then it will just add it to that one thing. It won't add it to both series, which was many, many more clicks before and you can change it to either of these things. You can also change the background. So here I can change the background to be say like this and it will change it in that. Um, but note that the, the wording I find pretty confusing because I thought that sometimes the background would be the background of this image. But if you change the fill color here, it allows you to do it there. A lot of things have changed. For example, these things have changed. They've changed the categorizations. There's no more subdivision of analytics pane and visuals pane. Now you've just got visual and properties, which you had before. But the things that are in properties are different to what they used to be. Things like the background, which didn't used to be here. It used to be in properties. Um, I find this a little bit cumbersome actually getting used to it. Hopefully it'll just take me some time to get used to, but they have just moved some things around. Also, what is confusing if you have this on object uh, creation for visuals is that you can insert it this way and I'll show you how to turn this on. But if you want to quickly change this visual to a horizontal one, you can't click that. That will create a new visual. Then this pops up and this allows you to say, well, what do you want to add to it? And there's a whole load of other things that I'll show you in a second with that. But you can exit out of all the side panes like you can in Microsoft Office, like Excel, for example. And if you go to the View tab, you can get all of them back. So I can click on Data and then this will be here and Format will be there on the side. They won't be showing at the same time. I have to toggle between them and Filters will be over here as well. I love that you can just turn Filters off completely, which is often what I actually want to do. I just want it to be there without the Expand button. There are some different ways that you can go about creating visuals now. The, uh, the, the visuals creation is done either the home tab or here, the insert tab over here. And note that if you want to format something on the page, including making it a report page tooltip or making it a drill through, you need to right click and go to format canvas. Then it will open up this and go to page information and then here you can change this from a standard to a tooltip to a drill through and then add your data that way. But you can't just drag and drop because you can't see them both at the same time. So there's one thing to bear in mind. And also it used to tell you what was filtered that here is Thailand. At the moment, it's not telling me that anywhere, which is a little bit irritating. So it's a bit difficult to see here if, if you're not used to navigating around. But if you go to the new interface, and you can drill through, you can drill through to whatever you want still, but you need to kind of remember that that's happened. And that's kind of why I advocate adding this kind of visual, which is just a card with the name of the country so that it's telling you what's there. And again, you can't clear slices to get through to that. All right. So on object visual formatting. So uh, here you've got Cartesian charts, which allow you to do a lot more than the other charts like this chart. So Cartesian charts, these from my experience, the ones that allow you to do a lot of things include the bar and column charts, the area and line charts, the scatter plots, the combo charts. Uh, the Azure map allows you to do a bit more than the rest, than the other maps. And then this kind of ribbon chart, these two are sort of in the middle. 
in terms of what you can format. Things that you can't click element by element are something with small, more multiples, where you've got a pie or donut chart, where you've got this sort of uh, tree map, a funnel chart, a waterfall chart, slices, cards, tables and matrices, and maps. So with these ones that you can't do something, you still get this icon and this icon, and this will allow you to add things very, very quickly. They are, I guess, the most commonly added thing to every visual. Uh, there are different things depending on which visual, as you might expect. And some visuals, like slices and cards, have almost nothing, just one or two objects that you can add there. Matrix, interestingly, has some, whereas table does not even have that button at the moment. I'm sure it's something they're working on. But here for matrix, you can add these two. Uh, for map, you can add these ones as well. It's not what I usually use, which is I usually like to change the theme. Uh, and yeah, it does get confusing how they've moved things around as to where they are. Map settings, I'm still getting used to it. I usually like to do a grayscale or a dark, depending on what the rest of my report is. So these are uh, general ways for how to do it. So you can you can uh, click on something and then it will select the visual with these things are kind of new where you see them in the middle like PowerPoint. But then if you click in it again and double click it, then you will be able to edit that bit. And then once you do that, it is sticky. So it remembers it even as you go into other visuals. Now you can click on elements, uh, but it is a little bit confusing. It took me a while to figure out how to do that. And then there are some things you can change by right clicking after you do that. So you can change sort of color of text, you can change size, other things like that, that are kind of intuitive how you might expect in Excel or other charts. Uh, for ribbon charts, you get the legend that you can kind of do this with, but not really much else. You can change the wording of things. You can also redo the header of any visual by clicking on this and then you can rename it. But note that if you do that, you're hard coding it. So even if you change the fields, it is still going to show you what you're looking at. So maybe I, I'm going to look at this by country now. It's still going to show me uh, weight by customer here, which is not accurately representing it. It also doesn't respect at the moment uh, custom conditional formatting that you have for the titles, although that is noted and I'm sure it's coming soon. Uh, new features that you have, so if you have a title, you also can expand that and you have the ability to have a subtitle and also a divider there. So a subtitle will in this case pull out what I need to and this could be a custom one. So that could be a nice way to do it. You can also change customize the spacing. So maybe you have spacing below the title, subtitle and title area. So a lot of different ways that you can do spacing, uh, which could be interesting for you to explore although that is too big. So you need to work out what the biggest and the smallest ones are. So here you can right click on these ones and you can add data labels just for that series, which is nice. And you can also change the data labels there, including the, the units used. You can also format the fill area. Be careful what you click on because sometimes you're clicking the plot area or the other thing and background might mean different things in different contexts. So bear that in mind. The reference line, which is from the analytics plane, is now just in here in visuals, which I think makes sense. It didn't make sense to have a whole other category for it. Although visual and properties, I mean, I like how they split it out last time, but now they're making you re relearn what's in everything. It's uh, not the most convenient, I would say. And another change to have happened is actually in the area of the AI visuals, the smart narratives. Note that if you in Increase this, it does give them two in categories, which I actually really, really like. And this will create a narrative. I will show you some settings that I recommend because there are some new settings as well. So here it will put this to you like this. And you can also get to the same thing just by inserting any text box. So any text box like this can actually add some values. Now you have this add value and you would expand it or review value would be over here. You also have show auto-generated values, which you didn't used to get to as easily. So here, if I want to edit the ones here, I can review and I can show auto-generated values and then I can edit them and see them and edit what they do and how they look, etc. 
So how to set it up in some of the settings. So file and then options and settings and then options. I hate how it's two clicks. I mean, there's only options and data source settings. Just put them in one click. And then if you go to preview features, just make sure that all of these are ticked, including this one. Uh, I usually keep them all ticked because why not? <laughs> some things have been in here for years and years. Um, but then you need to press OK and it tells you it might require a restart. And then if you go to report settings after you've restarted, you'll get some new things in here, which is suggest a visual and in the build menu, always show the visualization types. I really recommend having this on, both of these on. And this one as well, I recommend having this on, expand all subcategories. But if you, for example, if I untick some of these, uh, we'll see what the difference is. Press OK. It tells me it might require a restart. Some things do, some things don't. If I click on there, then I have to expand them. That's always an extra click for me. And suggest a type, honestly, I don't think it does a very good job at suggesting a type. Like here, for example, I have it in a slicer. And now I could have table and matrix. I mean, maybe a card would be nice as well. Uh, if it, it doesn't provide me with the most useful things to suggest. All right, so that's uh, the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is David and I have tons of videos on Power BI, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So check out my details if you find that useful. Thanks for watching.